My next guest held his first managerial position at the age of 18. He was named the COO at the age of 21 and elected to the board of directors at 22. But at 24, he took a leap of faith and started his own company that is currently moving millions of pounds of metal through the port of Tampa. Constantine Haig joins us now. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Let's go back a little bit. You've got quite a story. When did you first get your first job and how did all of that start? Wow. First job. Well, my first job was when I was much younger. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was probably 11, 12, mowing people's lawns, uh, doing that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And then at 14 is where I took my first uh leap of faith, if you want to call it, and I went up and I worked uh, at an automated parking garage in Hoboken, New Jersey. I spent about six years there, after which moving back here to start a manufacturing facility uh, for the company to manufacture all the machines. Mm -hmm. They had just sold uh, about three garages. Now these garages are the largest automated parking garages in the world today. And, Generating uh, what kind of revenue? Oh, revenue, I don't know. Uh, we built around $45 million worth of machines at the wow. facility in Clearwater, Florida. And um, yeah, it was great. We did that for a while and then I was uh, promoted to the chief operating officer. Mm -hmm. So I basically handled the installation, manufacturing, engineering, helped start up the whole thing when it was built. Uh, after which uh, we did that for a couple of years. Then in 2009, uh, I started a steel business for the company I was working for at first. So you saw a need within the company you were working for and, and uh, yeah. saw that opportunity. Sure, I mean, in 2009 or 2008, a lot of companies took a big hit, and I had seven people, and I couldn't just let seven people go. Mm -hmm. So I had to do something for them, and I uh, started this business, or I started a business for them first. Mm -hmm. uh, I did that for about a year, and a year later, I went off and did my own business, and uh, it's been doing great ever since. And you're located in Clearwater. Why Clearwater? Well, Clearwater was where my family moved when we came over from Europe. Um, and we settled there and every time I leave the Tampa Bay area or Clearwater I always uh, come back. It's mm -hmm. home for me. I love it. I love it here. How big is your facility now? Uh, the one we're in right now is 108,000 square feet. Mm -hmm. um, it's about three to four football fields large. Um, we employ about s around 70 people right now. We started out three years ago with seven people and we've built it up to around 70 now. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got big expansion plans coming up. I mean, we're looking for our finalizing property locations right now for a new 250,000 square foot facility. Wow. Uh, we're going to create about 200 new jobs over the next several years. Um, and I'm going to assume you're going to keep this all in Tampa Bay. Oh, absolutely. I love the Tampa Bay. I would never move from here. Um, that's my biggest thing is I want to keep it here. I want to create more jobs here. Let's talk about the size of pieces of, that you're fabricating. Sure. First of all, where are you getting orders from? Oh, we get orders. We do work internationally. Mm -hmm. We do. Uh, we have clients in Europe. We have clients in a lot of clients in states, mainly northern uh, Pennsylvania, Ohio, mm -hmm. that area. Uh, we do work in Canada. We do work for South America. Wow. They're all over the place. And they're looking for things as big as roller coasters? Oh yeah, we do a lot of roller coasters, we do a lot of work in the power industry, we do a lot of work in the bulk material handling equipment. I mean, we build massive machines, machines that weigh six, seven, eight hundred tons each. <laughs> so, very large. Wow. Yeah. You move all of this in and out through the Port of Tampa. You oh, ship we do a lot of it through the port. Most of it. Yeah, uh, right around the Port of Tampa. I mean, there's a lot of ports there, there's a mm -hmm. lot of berthings. Um, we're so actually how important it is for, how important is it to your industry, a multi-million dollar business, to keep that port of Tampa growing, thriving, and open for business? Oh, it's very important. I mean, the more work we get in and out of, I mean, one, it's economy, or how it's going to stimulate the economy greatly. We're going to make uh, more jobs around this area. We're going to. Uh, it's going to be easier to ship things in and out of here. Mm -hmm. It's going to. It's just evolves. I mean, it's. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, it's a uh, roller. It's like a roller coaster. You know, it just mm -hmm. keeps going and going and keeps going. Keeps going. Yeah. You. Uh, there are there are some folks here locally mm -hmm. who are putting the idea together to have a port in St. Petersburg. Yeah. Where is this initiative at now, and where do you hope it will go? Well, I don't think the port of uh, St. Pete will ever be the port of Tampa. Right. But what it'll be is it's going to be a great place for mega yachts. Big research development firms want to come here. Mm -hmm. They got a place to go in and out of. Um, it's going to stimulate the economy even more. It's mm -hmm. going to help St. Pete grow. Mm -hmm. It's um, what, what is it going to take to get a port in St. Pete? It's going to take a lot of people really wanting to push it through. Mm -hmm. and it's is there anyone opposing it? Uh, 
You know, I don't know too much, unfortunately, about okay. the opposing fa or people. Mm -hmm. uh, I know a lot of what's going on. I mean, they're building wharfs right now there. They are uh, bringing mega, uh, they're bringing a lot of electricity and stuff okay. like that into it right now, but opposing wise, I don't really know. But too. Kathleen Peters is pushing behind this as yes. well, I understand. Yes, yes she yes, is. So. She's a real big supporter of it. Uh, I think what she's doing is great. I think it's very important to, you know, help drive the economy here, and that's what she's doing, and that's what we love about her. Excellent. Your thoughts, as Arlene finished uh, her interview, your thoughts to young folks who are watching now, or maybe some advice to someone who's out of work at this point, besides coming to apply sure. for a job at your place. No, I understand. <laughs> uh, you know, for us, my biggest advice is what's true for you is what you've observed for yourself. Okay. What does that mean? Well, that, you know, for me, uh, growing up my life, I've always been told, you can't do that. Uh, that won't work. And I always judge things for myself, you know. Right. Well, can I do it? Well, you know, trying to push aside what other people said. And I found always what I found true for me. And that's what I acted off of. And um, don't give up. You know, it gets hard at times. Everything gets hard. But you got to keep pushing. you got to keep going. Mm -hmm. So. Wow. You're an inspiration. Thank you for being here. Thank Good you very luck much. with your expansion plans and, Thank you. and your growth for your company. I appreciate You're it. You're bringing you some much. great money into this economy here locally. When we come back, we're going to meet a young woman who is speeding her way into the male dominated field of race car driving. Stay with us.